Welcome to Electron Online. Theorems always make a lot more sense when we can see an example. So let's see an example of the fundamental theorem for line integrals. Again, remember, this is what we saw in the previous video, that the gradient of a scalar function dotted with the derivative or differential of position vector can be said to be equal to the function evaluated at the end point of the integral minus the function evaluated at the beginning point of the integral. So let's go ahead and use a sample function. Let's say that f in terms of x, y, and z is equal to the product of x times y. And the path over which we're going to integrate is going to go from the point 0, 0 to the point 1, 1 via the line function y equals x. So this is our a and this is our b. And we can then write the function, the path, in terms of the parameter variable t. So the two equation, parameter, the two parametric equations are x equals t and therefore y equals t since x equals y. And t is going to be defined from 0 to 1. And dx and dy will then be defined as dt. Now the position vector is written as x times i plus y times j. And since x and y are equal to t, we can write the position vector in terms of the parametric variable t, like ti plus tj, and then the differential would be 1i plus 1j times dt. So now we can go ahead and evaluate this line integral. So we can say that this is going to be equal to the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated a. But in terms of the parametric variable t, f of t is going to be equal to t squared. So this can now be written as the function evaluated at t equals 1 minus the function evaluated at t equals 0. And since the function is equal to t squared, then we can say that this is equal to 1 squared minus 0 squared, which is equal to 1. Now we should be able to get the same result when we actually work this out. So let's go ahead and work this out. So now for the second integral, we can say that the integral of the gradient of f, and the gradient of f would be the partial of, uh, of f with respect to uh, x in the i direction, plus the partial with respect to f in the y direction, or in the j direction, plus the partial of f with respect to z in the k direction. So that's the gradient of f. And we're going to do the dot product with dr, which is defined right here. dr is defined as 1 times i plus 1 times j times dt. And of course, when we integrate that, since we're now going to define things in terms of t, we'll see that in just a moment. So the partial with respect to, yeah, the partial with respect to f in terms of x times y, that's going to be equal to y. So this is the integral of y in the i direction plus the partial of f with respect to y is going to be x in the j direction and 0 in the k direction. That's good because we don't have a k there, so we're going to dot this with uh, i plus j times dt. And we're going to integrate from t equals 0 to t equals 1, so these are the t limits. And when we multiply these together, of course, what we're going to do instead of writing y and x, we're going to write t, so this is going to become the integral from 0 to 1 of t in the i direction plus t in the j direction plus 0 in the k direction dotted with i times oop, i plus j dt and so this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of t plus t multiplied times dt which is equal to 2 times the integral of t dt from 0 to 1. So now we go ahead and integrate that. So this becomes 2 times uh, t squared over 2 from 0 to 1. Plug in the upper limit, well, plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2 times 1 half, which is equal to 1, which is the same answer that we got up there. So there we have a nice example. Kind of a simple example, but nice example where you can see that, yes, in this particular case, the fundal theorem 
the fundamental theorem for line integrals does work, we can simply evaluate it at the end point using this concept right here, or when we go to the process, of course, we get the very same answer. And that's how it's done.